How's that? Oh, it's echo, yeah. It's called delay. <laughs> That's why it's echoing, because I've got it on my bass. It's an effect pedal. That's what it's like. So anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Echo gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bass sounds nice, but echoed. No, vo the voice was echoed before. Oh, well, somebody says that it's gone anyway. And my wife's calling. Should I answer my wife? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's answer my wife. Hey, wife, we're on the live stream now. Do you want to speak to everybody? Let me put you on speakerphone. Hang on. You on? <laughs> Take me off. <laughs> Take me off. <laughs> I'll tell you off. I'll tell you what, Lisa. I'll, I'll talk to you later. She got there safe, everybody. Say bye, everybody. Bye, Lisa. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Take me off. Take me off. Okay. No voice. Okay, it's fine. Everybody's fine. Everybody's fine, DMAC. Um, okay, guys. So we're going to be taking any questions today. Again, thanks to everybody for coming and hanging out today. Um, at the beginning of all these live sessions, I love for everybody to write where they're from in the world just because it makes me feel cool knowing that, you know, we're reaching the entire globe. So let us know where you are in the, in the world. And if you see anybody from your area, give them a high five and hook up with them, you know, get some bass love going on. So, oh, and anyway, just to let you know as well, we're going to be doing these pretty much every Wednesday. Um, for uh, for the next few weeks, we've got this this cool thing coming up. We've got a huge uh, site redesign over at Scott's Bass Lessons going on, and it's going to be it's colossal. We've been working on it for five or even is it six months, D Mac? Yeah. It's six months we've been working on it, so it's going to it's a complete redesign of the site. The functionality of the academy is going to be all upgraded, and it's been a ton of work, but it's going to be amazing. So we thought just to celebrate, we'd do some cool stuff like these live streams that we're doing every Wednesday to you guys. And also, we've got this massive giveaway going on right now. You might not have heard about it. If not, uh, we're giving away, uh, we're giving away, they can't see this, can they? Oh, hang on. We're giving away this bass. We're giving away um, a, ba a DB bass cab. We're giving away a, uh, we're giving away this TC electronic head over here. We're giving away one, two, three, four, I think six Aguilar. Basically, we're giving away an Aguilar pedal every single week leading up to the big draw that's going to be at the end of the month. I guess everybody's thinking, how do I, how do I join this? So all you need to do to enter the competition is go to scottsbasslessons.com forward slash, forward slash, huge, I think it's forward slash for you guys, isn't it? Huge giveaway. Huge giveaway for scottsbasslessons.com forward slash huge giveaway. Uh, go through each of the steps and, and you'll be entered in, the, uh, in all the, the giveaway shenanigans. And we'll be, again, we'll be giving away an Aguilar pedal uh, each week right through to the end of the month. And then on the end of the month, we're going to do the huge draw and somebody's going to win a bass, a cab, a head. And I'm sure there's something else as well. I'm sure Denmark. Denmark, you up for that? We're giving Denmark away. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so go check that out, guys. It'd be wicked to, uh, to get you in on that competition. Um, oh, the questions are coming in already. Hong Kong, Wisconsin, Austria, Texas, Georgia, Chester, London, Pennsylvania, Sydney, Australia. Is anybody here from the West Coast? Because it's 7 a.m. in the morning, West Coast. Somebody did say that they were going to be up at... Um, at 6.30 to catch this, so maybe somebody's late. Maybe somebody's hanging out. Belfast, New York City. Hey, Mike. Great city. Always inspired on the campus. Great. Cheers, Ed. Optimizer. It's not an optimizer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got the, we've got the, the, we've got, every, I think we've got all the Aguilar pedals to give away, which is going to be super cool. Um, Croatia. I've been to Dubrovnik, Demir. Great place. Really great place. Brett Farr, hey Brett, you got the micro pog. That's Brett that won the micro pog. Hey Brett, how you doing? 
Well, Brett, you should definitely en enter because you do hear of these sort of like weird anomalies where somebody will enter the lottery and win it twice, right? So, Brett, you might actually win this twice. So, Brett, where do you even live, Brett? I can't remember. Um, we actually sent Brett his pedal and he didn't... Did it arrive, Brett? We had to send you two, didn't we, in the end? Um, anyway, so there's a lot of people from a lot of places on here. Anyway, let's get into the questions, guys. Um, just hit me with a... Uh, no, just shake. What's it mean, just shake? My phone says just shake. No, I'm just going to say no, thanks. Um, Mark. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Everybody give Mark Smith a big shout out. Cool, uh, cool bass player. Obviously, Mark Smith from TalkingBass.net. Isn't it cool that me and Mark are sort of like the, you know, the YouTube bass guys and we knew each other years ago? I think that tickles me that. But, um, but yeah. Anyway, so hit me with your questions. When you hit me with your questions, guys, what would be really helpful, because I want you guys to chat among yourselves as well, but if you write question, all caps, before you actually ask the question, that'd be wicked. And this is going out, is this on YouTube as well, DMAC? Yeah, yeah so this is on, on YouTube as well, so I'm kind of just gonna have to shoot between the two. So bear with me while I'm shooting back and, uh, back and forward. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Leeds, Leeds, Leeds! <laughs> Nobody will understand that. It's a Leeds thing. Yeah. Do you prefer active, pa pr active pickups or passive pickups? Victor, do I prefer active pickups or passive pickups? Okay, so um, let me just turn that off. Uh, the, the, the active passive pickup thing, I really prefer passive because it's just, it's, it's not, it's just got a sound, you know, sort of like, and it took me a long time to actually hear it. I can remember when I first started playing bass, I was just like, there's no distortion. Like obviously there is nowadays, but back you know, in the dinosaur, when I started playing, there was not really any distortion or anything like that. I was just like, this is very uncool. Cause I'd come from sort of like guitardom playing Steve Vai chops and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and I just thought clean was clean. You know, if it didn't have distortion in, you don't care about it. But obviously clean isn't clean. There's a whole lot of tonal variations that you can get with simple amps. Not that this is a simple amp, but it's like a simple EQ, right? Uh, but it used to drive me nuts um, trying to EQ stuff. And generally now I just keep the EQ flat. I boost the bass a little bit and that's about it. Um, uh, but when it comes to, my point is that when it comes to active and passive pickups, they've just got a different sound. I get asked a lot, what, what do I prefer? Me personally, I do prefer, you know what? I do prefer passive pickups, especially on a P bass. I really don't um, dig the, the active sound on a P bass so much because it doesn't sound like a P bass, right? You know, you want your P bass. You want that grunt. got that grunt to it that it's got that grunt to it and I think the active just adds a bit more sort of for my ears it just it just doesn't sound like a P bass so on P basses I really like passive on jazz basses I really like passive although if you're going for that Marcus Miller sound obviously that is an active sound so it depends what your you know your tonal you know your, your preferences are tonally, it, you know, it depends what plays you're into. I often say to people, like, who are your influences? What tones do you really like? Listen to those guys, find out what they're using, and then go for that. You know, if you're really into Marcus Millen, you really like that sound, then, you know, that's a really active style sound, um, you know, go for that sound. Uh, don't stress about it too much. But on, on other bases, I do like an active sound. Like, I've got sort of like a five string with a high C over there, and like, I really like the sound. It's an active bass, but it sounds true to that instrument. For me, it's what's true to the instrument. It's a personal thing, but that's, that's my take on it. Um, Tony, Tony, I haven't seen you in years, man. Three years, four years or something, isn't it, Tony? Tony Humor. So Tony Humor is uh, a great bass player and uh, got me out to, where is it, Slovenia. So he lives in Slovenia, got me out to Slovenia. Any Slovenians, you should go to the jazz camp out there. It's really cool. I've taught her that a few times. It's really, really great. Um, okay, so my bases. Um, 
my bases. So I've got, so super quick, I'm all plugged in, I don't wanna unplug myself. My bases is this, obviously, I've got the P base. This is, I get asked a lot of questions about it. It's a Nate Mendel Fender. Um, sounds killer. It's got a Seymour Duncan quarter pounder in, the, in here, which gives it, from my limited knowledge, a little bit more poke, a bit more output. It's got a like a badass style bridge on it. It's not, it's kind of like a Fender version of badass. Um, you'd be really surprised at what tonal differences happens just from different bridges. I don't know if any of you guys know that, but different bridges can affect the tone like ginormously, huge, weird. I didn't even know that until recently. Um, and it's totally passive, right? Uh, the neck's a bit, I, I don't like the feel of the neck so much, the actual lacquer, it's a bit sort of like, a bit thick, you know, a bit sort of like yellow. Um, but the neck width is somewhere between a jazz bass and a P bass, which is really good when you're kind of, um, doing you know across the fingerboard like that makes it a little bit easier and um, the other so i've got like i've got some some p bases let me just grab some others um, i've got this p base sorry denmark if i go out of focus to tell me this is a fender uh, like an overwater sorry p base which is really cool it's a bit more refined it's got sort of like obviously we've got like the four bolt thing here but this one's got like a little bit of a smoother smooth a bit to it. This has got a buffer circuit in that we're working on and that's a work in progress. So super nice bass, check out Overwater if you haven't already. Um, I've got this beast. This is just all the P basses. Um, I've got this bass here, which is a killing sounding bass, but it really needs set up to be honest. Um, it's a 58 reissue, I think, custom shop uh, Fender. And it's really, really nice. Like I, I'm not like a super forum geek or anything like that, but I have, you know, looked at forums and when people are talking about relic bases and stuff like that, and people say, oh yeah, I tried out whatever name it is, uh, like relic base, you know, whatever name it is, and man, they're as good, if not better than um, Fender Custom Shops. To me, and I've played pretty much all the relic style instruments, or a lot of them anyway, this is still like the best in terms of sort of like just pure sexiness in terms of like just the way it feels and stuff it like feels old it really does feel old it's got flat mounds on it. it's really nice um the neck on this is really really wide if you're going to buy one of these really be aware that the necks are sort of like 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 that way across this way right so this is like between a jazz and a, a precision but this is just like between a sort of like olympic swimming pool and an aircraft carrier it's really wide you could probably you know, play a five string and it'd be thinner than that. And then the other bass I've got, sorry guys, oh, another P bass. I've got this rock and roll relics one, which is really cool bass that I've been trying out. Just got this a few weeks ago. It's really cool. It's got nice new round wounds on it. It sounds really great. I do love round wounds on P basses, you know. And then, oh my, what? Oh, I've got so many basses. And then I've got this. <laughs> I've got like an overwater with a high C. And then, sorry guys, I'm just running through these. Oh, and then I've got this which is an overwater. I will bring this out the uh, the shed one day and let you guys hear it because it's pretty, pretty epic. And I've got, holy macaroni, this fretless from Ibanez, really cool one. If you can get one of these, you should get it. It's like a, a Talman. I don't even know if they make them anymore. And then finally, you'll have heard all this, this one before. I've got, oh, wow, I'm sweating. This, this is the overwater jazz bass thing that I use. Um, super, it's like 33 inch scale. Um, so I use that and uh, I feel like I've won a match. Is that the end of it, dude? Can, I do, can we go now? <laughs> oh my God, I sweat on. So that's all my bases. Um, I'm like, even though I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bases, two of them acoustics. I don't really use them that much. One of them's got a high C. I don't really use it that much because I'm super into P bases in them all. I've got one jazz bass I use when I want a jazz bass sound. I've got one, two, I've got four P bases. Now that does sound extravagant, doesn't it? I've never thought about it like this. Yeah, I really like P bases. So I have no excuse for the P bases and I'll probably just get more. <laughs> I'll probably just get more. Uh, uh, flats or rounds. I use, I use both. I've got flats on this one, but I've really... Yeah, I like...
just like the raspiness of it. I do like flats as well, but just, you know, flavor of the month at the minute is, uh, is the round rounds. Um, what else we got? What do you think of PJ bases? I'm not sure. I really like the Yamaha BBs that, that, are, that are a PJ, the old ones. Um, so I like them, I, um, but I need to check them out some more. I need to check them out some more. Big up to Scott. Look forward to meeting you. Look forward to, you to meeting you too, Ryan. Maybe that's a different Scott. But anyway, if it's meant for me, Scott, I'm looking forward to look at, like meeting you as well. <laughs> um, lots of base questions. Sire bases, I haven't tried them. I haven't tried them, but I've heard they're really good. Did you see the Jack's asking about the Todd Johnson seminar? Todd Johnson seminar? Obviously, that's in the uh, the academy. Um, Todd did do a seminar for us about three weeks ago, I think. I've got no idea what it was on, Jack, unfortunately. But um, if you go, if you log into the academy, you'll be, be able to see in there. Um, sort of like what he's working on each every Monday we do like a live uh, a live stream seminar with one of the faculty members at the academy over at Scott's Bass Lessons and you know after it's gone live after everybody's watched it and stuff like that you can it's live uh, you can obviously join it when you're an academy member but if you miss it for any reason because you're sort of like in a random part of the world or time zones and stuff like that you can catch it in the seminar archive in the academy anyway so you just log in go to the seminar archive in the top navigation and there's over a hundred seminars in there by guys like Todd Johnson, obviously, Danny Mo Morris, Ed Friedland, uh, Divinity Rocks, Sean Hurley, Rufus Philpot, Zoltan Dekany, Gary Jackson, uh, you know, the, the, full, the full Monty. So yeah, so if you, if you are an Academy member, don't forget that seminar archive is there for you guys. It's full. It's full of stuff. Who's teaching? Who's, or who's teaching at the Academy? The, oh, like the Academy at Scott's Bass Lessons. Um, we've got a ton of, we've got sort of like a core faculty at the Academy. So if you don't know what the Academy guys is, it's like Scott's Bass Lessons obviously is my thing, right? But the, the Academy is like the online school. It's sort of like the ultimate online bass school in a nutshell, really. You've got, we've got step-by-step -step courses that you can study in your own time. So like we've got a 10 hour scales and arpeggio course. We've got a 10 hour beginners course. We've got, you know, um, how to play in a band and like interacting within the band. We've got palm muting course. We've got, I think we've got over sort of like 15 courses or something. Like there's a lot of courses and that's study in your own time courses. But then alongside that, we've got the, li the weekly live seminars that we do where we get tutors from all around the world. Not just, not just normal tutors, like the best tutors in the world, like you know, Todd Johnson, who taught for MI in LA, Danny Mo Morris, who teaches in Berkeley, Ed Friedland, who taught in Berkeley and he's the best bass educator of like, all time, in my opinion. He's just sort of like blows my mind every time I watch him. Those guys come in once a week and do a live stream sem se seminar for all, the, uh, all the, the academy members and then we put them in the archives. So we've got, what was the question? Who teaches there? So obviously I teach in the academy, but we've got like Todd Johnson, Danny Mo Morris, Ariana Cap, uh, Rich Brown, monster bass player from uh, Toronto, who on Monday did a seminar for you guys on odd time signatures. We've got obviously Rufus Philpot does stuff, uh, Steve Lawson, Damien Erskine, Ed Friedland, uh, Zoltan Dekany from one of the fantastic bass player over here in the UK who um, teaches at Leeds College of Music. Again, Gary Jackson, one of the guys who teaches at Leeds College of Music. Um, I've probably missed somebody out. So if anybody's online and watching this, I do apologise if I've missed anybody out. It's just because we've got quite a few people um, teaching in there. But if you haven't checked out the Academy, guys, go check it out. It's just go over to scottsbassessence.com. You can grab a 14... Actually, it's, normally it's a 14-day free trial. But last week I gave everybody a special link so they could try it out for 30 days free. Um, let's do that, actually, Dima. Have we got that? Have we still got on that? I think it's scottsbassessence.com. There you go, Denmark's got it up. Is it 30 day? Yeah. Scottsbassessence.com forward slash 30 day. And that means you can try out the academy for 30 days, totally free of charge. 
Um, go to like in your 30 days, obviously there's gonna be like four live seminars with some of the best tutors in the world um, that you can go to and ask them questions directly. You can submit, vi submit videos to me so I can give you feedback. You, there's courses step by step that you can study in your own time. And we're releasing a course every month, so there's a new course coming on the 18th. So go grab that, that 30 day free trial if you haven't already, because it's super cool. And uh, if you don't like, if you join and you're like, I hate this, I hate Scott's face, I do not want to be a member, you can actually cancel your membership within the dashboard. You don't need to send us an email and say, I want to cancel. You can cancel your membership totally, you know, within the dashboard and stuff like that. Press cancel and you won't be billed anything. Okay, so it's super, super cool. Go check it out if you haven't. I'm sure there's like a ton of Academy members on here anyway that will tell you it's cool. Anyway, so hopefully that answered. That was a long ass question. A long ass answer, wasn't it? Um, any tips for getting out of long-term ruts? We've had that question. This seems to be a question that a lot of people are asking actually. If you're in a long-term rut, I'll just quickly go over it. What you should do is check out the past live seminars as well. They're both on YouTube because I, I talk about it. If you're stuck in a rut, generally what this means is, you know, I call it the dreaded plateau. You know, you've just, your plane's been the same forever. Okay, well, a lot of it has got to do with you, you've got limited vocabulary on the base. So for instance, if I play, you know, something, and limited vocabulary means you've got limited like licks that you can do. If I play, I think last week I used this example. This sort of like on a D7. That bit there, I stole that directly from Danny Mo Morris, who teaches in the academy and Berkeley. I stole it directly from him. I heard him doing it. It was, I think I heard him doing it on like an A groove. I heard him do this and I was like, wow, what's that? It just stuck out to me and I was like, I need to know what that is. So I worked it out and then I started working it through all the keys and stuff like that. So what I would recommend is if you have reached that plateau, working out those gems that you hear people do is a real, real, um, it's a strong way to get out of it because it's expanding your vocabulary, you know, to put something like an academic sounding thing, it's expanding what you're doing. So look for, first of all, like listen to great music that you're into where the bass is there, you know what I mean? You can hear it doing some cool stuff. Work out what it is, them little bits that sort of like jump out of you, work out what it is, and then you're gonna have to try and get it in grooves. So if it was, um, say something like a pentatonic type of thing. So like, say we're in G minor, right? So. Um, say, say you heard somebody go. That little. sounds great then you need to work out what it is and then you need to start getting it and using it in all your other grooves right to the point where it like kills people to hear it <laughs> they're just like stop playing that because that's how you're going to get it in your vocabulary so what we did is now let's do it in d minor in a different tempo Boom, dunk, 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 dunk. You know, I'm looking, <clears throat> then do it in C minor, a different groove, in a different groove, different key. And, it, and then what you want to look for is lots of things like that. And that will add to your overall, overall vocabulary. And then that's when you're going to feel like your bass playing is getting, you know, recharged and you're sort of like playing new lines. Um, other stuff that's obviously self-explanatory is like, uh, you know, fingerboard knowledge. Um, one thing that I'd really rec recommend everybody do, if you haven't already, is uh, walking bass lines. Like it's just, and, and I know some people might be like, oh, I'm not really keen on walking bass lines, but just as a, a, as a vehicle to learn the fretboard, there's nothing like it because it takes 
So check this out, it takes all rhythm out of the equation. A walking bass line, other than a few skips here and there, is generally You know, it's just, it's a da, 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 da. there's no funk, there's not, you know, it's just quarter, straight quarter notes, okay? It's straight quarter notes. And what this means is that it, it strips away that, that, that kind of like, oh, I need to do this fill and that fill. It's just like, no, this is straight quarter notes. Just play a great walking bass line, okay? And, it, and it's tough. Like, what learning, for me, learning walking bass was that. There's like a few things that can really... Think, I really think to myself, man, that's the one thing that pushed my bass playing. That's the one thing. There's only like a few things. So maybe I should say that's not the one thing. Maybe I should say that's one of the things that really pushed my bass playing. But walking bass was one of those things. Absolutely, 110%, without a doubt, absolutely key to my development as a bass player and why I play like I do today. <clears throat> and absolutely, for you, it will be the same thing. So if you're not doing sort of like a study of walking bass lines yet, do it. Even if you're not into jazz, pick a really simple standard, get some books, join the academy, do what you will, but start studying walking bass lines because it will get your playing together in a huge way. Uh, any tips on starting transcription? Simon, any tips on start, starting transcription? Uh, super patient <laughs> because it takes a long time. Super, super, super patient. So you might... Like, go at it kind of like a phrase at a time. A phrase at a time. Like, not even maybe a bar at a time. You know, that's like half a bar. One, two, three. If you're like transcribing that, I'd just literally be transcribing that one little bit and I'd be singing it as well. I'd, I used to get, I was very good with a cassette player. You know, rewind. And I'd try and sing the, the first note. Bap, bap, bap. And get that first note, bap, 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 and I get the first note, beep, 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 you know, and I'd try and work it out like that. That's a really great way of doing it. Using headphones is really fantastic as well because obviously you're hearing it in your head. What I'd recommend is having one ear in and one out. If well, if you're in a if you've got your bass going through the headphones as well, that's all right, but you don't just want your headphones on because then you won't be able to hear your bass. So yeah, do that. And there's like slow down software and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> best amp for slap? I have no idea. I think all, all, like, you know, there's a lot of cool amps now. There's a lot of cool amps. Um, What is the website to the academy you talked about? Scott Space Lessons. ScottSpaceLessons.com. Just go to ScottSpaceLessons.com. That's where the academy is. I should actually just drop the academy and just call it Scott Space Lessons. It does, you know, cross my mind a lot. <laughs> It'd be a lot, a lot simpler, wouldn't it? Do you have a method, method to use um, the melodic and harmonic minor? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, the melodic minor is a huge topic. Really cool. Let me just give you one tip, Thomas. Um, you can use a harmonic minor if you want to over a minor two five one. That's that. That's. I just want to give you one little tip. Um, so, for instance, if you're doing like a minor two five one, okay, into C minor. So it's like D minor seven flat, D minor seven flat five to G seven flat nine. C minor. Okay, if you're playing that, if I add this in. You know, you can, depending on the tempo, if the tempo is sort of like. So, like one, two, three, four. 
two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, D minus seven flat five, G seven flat nine, C minus seven, right? Two bars. So like a bar each, C minus two bars. You'd have time to to actually play the chord tones and hit all the juicy notes. If it was whizzing by, oh, deep, deep, but I did da 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 half a bar of each. Um, then go in, you know. Might be a bit of a rush. So you can actually play a, a C harmonic minor over the entire thing. And that really helped me out when I was a little bit limited in terms of being able to play through the chords. I knew if I saw a minor two five one, I could improvise over that with the with the the one chord uh, harmonic minor. So if in like the instance of C minor, a minor two five one into C minor. Okay, you can use. over the entire thing. So that's just a little tip for any harmonic minor dudes and dudes out there. Uh, the melodic minor is, there's a lot of applications for it. I could, I could sit here for days talking about the melodic minor. Very cool. What do you think of the limelight relic? Precision basses, limelight relic? I don't know, I haven't tried one. Um, how do you develop your groove if you don't have musicians to play with? Do you learn tunes and bass lines like Pino Palladino or listen to records? Adam, what? Adam, hey Adam, <laughs> how you doing? For me, I do, so I learn tunes and bass lines like Pino Palladino, and I play along with the records as well, trying to cop the feel of them and the feel of the drummer as well. Um, I can remember I went to, yeah, I'll tell you about this. So I, w I was studying with a guy uh, called Adam Rogers, a guitar player. I was playing bass, but he was a guitar player, but I was like talking to him about um, improvisation and Adam, um, has this like freaky, freakily uh, uncanny ability to essentially just like, he's like, I'll, I'll solo like George Benson. And he'll like solo, just, just like George Benson. And then he'll like say somebody else, he'll solo like Pat Martino. It just blew my mind. I was like, how did you do that? And he was just like, I just like learned that stuff and just played it along with the record over and over and over, getting into their style, getting into their vocabulary, getting into the feel that they were using, their approach everything like that. So that's kind of what I do with, with Groove as well. I try and learn people's feel. So not, not just the notes, but learning their feel because each individual musician has a completely different feel and I try and concentrate on that. Um, so yeah, so that's what I do. And then obviously, like I do personally, I do a lot of metronome exercises as well, just like putting a metronome on and just having, um, I'll give you guys a, a killer exercise, right? So, um, if, if the technology works. Uh, uh, how do I do this? <laughs> okay, so hold it, hold it. Bear with me, guys. Um, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just putting a metronome on here. One, two, one, two, one, two. So it sounds like this. Oh, hang on. Sounds like this. Sounds like this. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so we just. So I get like a metronome like that. Um, get it so it's like so it's feeling good if you want to get this metro I'll tell you what the metronome name is in a minute and then 
I, I'll do something like this. Um, uh, so I'll start getting rid of the beats. So let's get rid of two, like this. It should sound like this. So two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, go. So there you hear I, I rushed it slightly and that's what happens when you're improvising you can tend to sort of like push it a little bit at the time especially when you're doing fills and stuff like that people tend to fill which is why when drummers do a fill digga 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 boom they come in completely at the wrong place right you, you must have all played with the drummer and then he's completely out of time because he he's not got the groove together so this exercise is great for that and you can take it to another extreme so that was we were doing six beats there, so one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one. We were taking off that last two. So we can do we can do this. Um two, three, four. Okay, so in, a, in an ideal environment, I'd be practicing this groove and I'd be doing it, I'd be getting it down. I wouldn't be just like throwing it on and trying it out with you guys live. That's my excuse anyway. But it's a really great exercise. So let me just tell you the, uh, the metronome app so you can check this out. It's called Metro Timer. Metro Timer. Uh, it's just like a smartphone app and you can download it. It's super cool for doing stuff like this. And what you're doing there is, it's, you're giving yourself because how can you tell that you're pushing, really? You know, if, you, if, you're play, if you're not doing exercises like this, right, and you do a fill, how can you tell if, if you're pushing that fill, if you've got no way of actually testing it? So that's where this comes in, because you can get that groove down, and then you can start taking out the beats. Space. You know... And if you're rushing, or you're, you'll be rushing, if anything, you know, aliens like, like drag. But like most people, 99.99999% of people will rush, right? But you won't know it. <laughs> you won't know it, okay? So by using a, an app like this and that specific exercise, it will really indicate to you guys whether you're rushing your fills. Like I was throwing it about a little bit there instead of just, like I really recommend just kind of sort of like playing a groove to start with. It doesn't even have to be your groove. So you could play something like, something like um, <coughs> just something like that or uh,
but just something pretty simple and then expand it from there. So don't start doing sort of like Don't, don't go crazy like that, right? Because then, be kind, what I'm saying is like, be kind to yourself a little bit. That'd be great. Um, I don't want to, uh, I, w I want to help you play bass. I don't want to help you give up playing bass, right? Um, the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is good. It's, it's, it's great because it, you can just, it's, it's a good, um, it's a good, if I could ever get it out, it's a good way of just, you know, playing around the fingerboard uh, and doing exercises with it. So the circle of fits is like C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, uh, E, A, D, G, C. Okay, that's the circle of fits. And then you can do stuff like go up one arpeggio. And just like link your arpeggios up and do all kinds of all kinds of cool stuff. You can do it all in one key, all in one place. So the thing about the circle of fifths is, as a bass player, we can go. Say we were going to play dominant arpeggios, right? We could go. That's around the circle of fifths, right? All we're using is the same shape. So it's not really doing anything. Whereas if you were like, okay, let's play around the circle of fifths all in one area, to the F, to the B flat, to the E flat, to the A flat, to the D flat, to the G flat, to the B, to the E, to the A, to the D, to the G, to the C. All oh, right, I'm back at C. Okay, so that was all within kind of like what, five, five, six frets instead of just going. So try and really like get super laser focused on one area of the fingerboard. Then once you've done that, then play them back to front. So play them seventh down. So seven, five, three, one, seven, five, three, one, seven, five, three, one, all in one area. It's actually eight frets, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight frets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, seven frets. I'll work it out for yourself. <laughs> it's not that many frets. Keep yourself limited. By limiting yourself, it's really, really cool. Uh, the metronome exercise is great. Wicked. Denmark, DC's joined. It says on here, D DC joined. <laughs> um, 500 comments. Wow, 500. Guys, just while I've got you, just because we kind of sort of like, we've got 10 minutes left. Let me know um, what you like in terms of uh, content on these live streams. Do you like this Q&A st style of vibe where I'm just taking your questions live? Do you like more structured, sort of like where I'd come on and teach a topic? Or, you know, just let us know in the, in the comments. Gemma, Gemma, what are you on here for? You're not a bass player. I'm watching you, Gemma. <laughs> it's my, uh, my friend's wife. Oh, actually, they're not there. They get married in October. Not wife yet. Okay. Um, the sting. Yeah, the sting. Okay. Right. Th so I don't know if it's called the sting. I watched a uh, VHS video years ago, and this dude, this bass player, when he did it, he called it a sting, which is one of these. So, you know, somebody put, put the sting, question mark. So um, it's, it's, so it's, how can I put this in? So the sting isn't as zizzy. <laughs> I'm not kind of zizzing back and forward as much as you think. I'm not doing this. It's kind of like a. It's, it's maximum two, daddy, daddy, maximum. It's a lot of the time it's. It's almost like it's a normal trip, like a hammer on pull off.
It's never more than two though, do you? Never more. And a great riff actually, I'm gonna do a lesson on this, so watch out for this. A great riff to, to try this out, because generally I only do it on the first of the fourth finger. Rock. I only do it on the first of the fourth finger. I sometimes do it on the third, but generally it's the fourth. And so when I'm playing kind of like a... a okay, let, let's take something like that, right? Um, yeah. Something like that. Um, I'm only ever using the first of the fourth finger. So that's how, it, how that works. And it really helps getting used to. And I can do it with the fourth and the third as well. I do it with the third as well sometimes, depending on what fingering and where I am playing on the fretboard. So there's a cool riff, right? And this, this riff, everybody will love this riff. It is, forgotten the name, it's a Jamiroquai, the dinosaur one, Godzilla tune. I don't even know what key it's in. Um, Let's say it's in the key of F, right? Does everybody know this tune? Let me just let me just check in. Does everybody know? If you haven't heard this tune, guys, it's all the bass line on it is just epic. Does anybody know what it's called other than Jamiroquai Godzilla? Deeper Underground. Aha, it came to me. So it's called Deeper Underground by Jamiroquai, and I'm gonna teach you it in completely the wrong key here, unfortunately. But it's really, really great to, for getting these stings down. There's a lot of rock going on here, isn't there? It's really great to get these stings down. Let's do it in the key of F. So it's sort of like, so F's the root. I'm not doing any stings yet. Okay. Then the next bit is a hammer on. So we're in the key of F, right? So is a, it's like a gliss hammer on type thing. I'm going from the B flat, from the A flat to the B flat. And then when I go back to this A flat, there is a sting, okay? So. So. Okay, so hammer, sting, and all I'm doing is going. I could even hammer it on like, like that, but I'm going. Now it's cool because it's got the first finger and the next part of the riff, I'm gonna use the fourth finger to do a sting, okay? So just that first bit, I'm just gonna make sure everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah deep underground, yeah, yeah. Does anybody know what key it's in? Let me know what key it's in. Uh, Okay, that's the next bit. So here again, we're using that, that little gliss thing. I use it all the time. Use that. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, anyway, deeper underground. First thing. Hammer onto the C, and then, and check the hand movement is not all weird and, you know, check out my hand movement. In fact, check my hand out on anything I play and it's generally, there's no, I'm never pulling any weird shapes or anything like that. So it's a really, really great idea to film yourself sometimes or practice in front of a mirror. Um, firstly, because you can see if you, you know, if you're looking good. Uh, which I never am, and uh, but you can look at your hand and you can see whether you're pulling any weird fingers or anything like that, you know. Uh, so again, we've got this. First sting, second sting, and it's just a ba It's just from the B flat to the B and then back, and then down to the A flat and then it starts again. So really slow. <sighs> Put a 
heavy riff, right? Okay, so it's just a really great way of getting that together. Don't ever play like that, you'll just get sacked. <laughs> no licks. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really great riff to get that. First finger. Fourth. What key's it in? I'm sure somebody's put what key it's in. C sharp. Hey Rachel, how you doing? C sharp. Uh. Um. Yeah, so like really great riff. Play around with it guys because it's like it's super super fun. And another, what were we listening to the other day, DC? <laughs> Loving the DC, come on. Which one? Jamaica Choir track that was killing. Black Capricorn Day. You know, um, this is like off topic, right? But you've got, to, uh, I don't even know what key this is in. Um, It's lower than that. Um. Check out Black Capricorn Day by Jamiroquai. Again, what a bass riff. Just one of the coolest. One of the coolest. Yeah, it's an EBS. No, it's not the micro pog. pog. It's, um, it's the octobass EBS which is uh, this, so it does this, so. Um, And the pog, it is um, does that. It's just like the high one. You can actually get a. Uh, gonna break my strings here. You can actually get like I can. That's the sub octave. <laughs> That's on the, but I, I, do, I do, I do prefer the pog kind of for that, that thing. And that's just with the um, with the filtering on as well. Yeah. 
That's, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just got carried away there. <laughs> um, tried using the tone prints on the TC Electro. Yeah, so check this out, man. Like, we're doing this huge giveaway where we're giving away, like, pedals and cabs and a bass and all this stuff. And we're also, we're also giving away this as well, which is a TC Electronic G, BH, G, BH800. And it's got this tone print thing. It's actually like a killer, I don't know what I'm saying, actually. It's a really killer sounding head. Um, really nice EQ and stuff. Really, it's like a class D power amp, which is really nice. The tone print stuff, for me, as it stands, if I wasn't working in a studio, would be a little bit useless because when I'm going on a gig, I don't want just two effects. I want, you know, so, and, and you know, and you can change the effects on it, but you've got to have your phone and then hold your phone to your bass and then put the, it, it does this weird noise and then, and then that uploads, seriously, it uploads a different effect into the amp. So technologically it, it's, it's mind blowing. I've got no idea how it works. You download an app, you blast it through the pickups of your bass. It downloads through your bass into the amp, and you can so you can have like octavers and flanges and stuff like that. But there's only two, so you can only use two. You know, you can only use two. So um, it'd be okay if you just want to use two effects, but you might want to use more in a gig. So and I'm like I'm like I'm just sort of like I'm not really that into um, technology. I'm not like a technologist. I'm sort of like you know, Betamax and stuff like that. And like, if, if, if in my, my ideal amp would have one knob, maybe like a volume knob, you know, maybe not even that, it'd just be like one volume. <laughs> As in like no volume knob, it'd just be like plug in and go. Like seriously, I like, I'm really into sort of like simplicity, which is why I like P bases, because I like the, I like limitations uh, in everything, pretty much that I do. I like limitations when I'm composing. I'll give myself limitations to compose within, you know, so I'm just into it. But man, but it's good. It's, it's a killer head. It's a killer head. It just depends what you like. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's super cool. Hey, Daryl, how's it going? Give us a thumbs up, Daryl. Everybody give Daryl some love. Daryl is the guy, Daryl C. Anders, uh, is the guy uh, behind Dunlop, like Super Brights and all that and the MXR stuff and... You know, he's the, he's the guy behind uh, the man that's driving that along and doing some really cool stuff. So give Daryl some love because he deserves it. He's a super cool guy. Um, I'm not sure if he was over in Germany. Were you over in Germany this year, Daryl? It would have been called Hangman. I had a uh, child dilemma, I think it was. There was some reason I couldn't go. I think it was... Uh, see, Rachel's giving you some love, Daryl. Um, anyway, guys, so... Yeah, have I forgotten to tell him anything, Dmac? So, like, we'll, let's call it a day. It's just past four o'clock. Um, we've got some more recording to do here. So, uh, huge thanks to you guys again. Um, share this video, like, like it, do all of the sh if you if you've enjoyed it. Obviously, if you don't, if you haven't enjoyed it, don't don't share it. Uh, but if you have enjoyed it, share it and like it and do all of those shenanigans. That'd be really really cool. We'll be back next Wednesday with another one of these live streams same time so if you're around it will be amazing to see the same crowd uh, coming in and hanging out and uh, and also like you know pre-submit questions as well sort of like shoot me like i'm on instagram and stuff like that you can shoot me a message on there i might be able to catch it although the messages too do come quite yeah the, there's a lot of it there's, there's a lot of messages coming on instagram but we've got a huge giveaway going on at the minute guys remember that just go to scottsbasslessons.com forward slash huge giveaway you can win a head you can win a cab, you can win a bass, you can win pedals, all of that thing. So just go to scottsbasslessons.com forward slash huge giveaway. D-Mac's getting it up for you. And 
And also, if you want to, you know, I know there's a lot of questions about the academy over at scottsbaitassins.com, what it was and, and all of that. As I said, it's the ultimate online uh, base school, you know, in the world. Um, we've got uh, some of the best teachers doing live stream lessons every week. That These guys are like teaching at places like Berkeley and, you know, have taught at places like Musicians Institute, Leeds College of Music here. Uh, you know, have taught all over the world. They're teaching the academy every single week. Every Monday, I think it is, we do a live stream lesson. But also, and note, all of those are archived as well. So if you miss them, you know, we, we, we archive them. There's over 100 lessons, like hour-long seminars in there at the minute. But also, we've got a step-by-step -step course library as well. All the courses that we do go in there. We've got, I think, like 15 step-by-step -step courses that you can study in your own time. And also we've got the community in there and then I do a weekly student focus session where you can give your videos to me. If you want tips and stuff like that, I can, I can help you out. So check out the Academy. If you want to, don't go to the, so check this out. If you want to try out the Academy, do not go to the website because you will see the 14 day free trial there. And for you guys today, we've got a special 30 day free trial. Okay, a 30 day free trial. So you can try out the entire thing for 30 days. That will give you access to all the courses, all the community. You'll get uh, four live seminars with some of the best base educators in, in, you know, in the world within your 30 day trial. The full nine yards, just to see if it's for you. Um, totally free. And if you don't like it for any reason, you can just cancel it within your dashboard. Just go to the dashboard, go to account. You can cancel it. No harm, no file. Foul. File? No harm, no file. No harm, no foul. You can just check it out. And if you want, you can cancel. You know, and what I'm trying to do here is build the ultimate base school, online base school, but make it accessible to everybody and, you know, and let them try it for free, which is what this is all about. But remember, that is only a link for you guys. ScottsBaseLessons.com forward slash 30 day. Okay. ScottsBaseLessons.com forward slash 30 30 day. It's not available anywhere else and I would be hugely appreciative if you don't share it out as well because I'm wanting to give it to you guys and not, you know, the world. So it's just for you guys, 30 day free trial, scottspacesessons.com forward slash 30 day and that's three zero day. Anyway guys, um, thanks again for hanging out live. Amazing. Uh, again, as I said, we'll be back next Wednesday for another, you know, another the Q&A session or maybe I'll teach something if you want me to teach something I'm going to go through the through the questions and uh, I asked you guys whether you like the Q&A format or AMA or whatever people call it now or the uh, look at me I'm in with the kids I'm in with the kids DC uh, <laughs> AMA <laughs> or whether you want me to like teach a topic or something like that because I'm cool with that it's a full hour so we get to hang out and do whatever anyway as always guys huge thank you to you guys Take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. The 2015 Kickstarter Challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.